sa lahat. Yun. Let's pray. Most gracious and loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for the songs that you have sung, Panginoon. Truly, Lord, uh, you are worthy of our praises, Panginoon, because of what the Lord Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we are here, Panginoon, because of that, because of this wonderful gift that you have given to us. And we pray, Lord, that uh, this gift, Panginoon, may, may share din namin, Panginoon, sa ibang tao. As we hear your words, as we listen, as we meditate on this passage, Panginoon, enlighten us, give us insight, illumine, illumine Lord God, your scripture in front of us, and let our eyes be open. Listen as we hear your words, O Lord. Lord, thank you for this opportunity again that we could hear your words. In Jesus' name, amen. So, here now we read you know, the central theme of Paul's letter to the Romans. The Gospel. So, yan yung po yung title ng message natin. It's about the Gospel. No? The Gospel. The, the power of the Gospel. So, if you want to know what the letter of the Roman is all about, it's all about the Gospel. There is nothing more important to Paul all to the uh, or no to the entire world no there's nothing more important in the scripture than the gospel of god or the good news it came no yung, yung gospel no yung good news na naririnig natin lagi it came from the greek word no you you agelion which means no you no eu good and then agelion no to proclaim or a news no to proclaim so minsan ang greetings natin no pag uh, nasa lubong natin yung ating mga kababayan is that kamusta kabayan anong balita di ba anong balita it's just a greetings and some of us no, we are accustomed of greeting no, each other no, with that no, and no, we don't really mean it minsan magugulat magugulat ka pa nga no, pag uh, sinabi mo anong balita ay eh, nakipagtsika na sa yung kabayan natin di ba hindi mo naman siya kilala sino di ba so but everyone wants to hear some kind of good news. Diba? Siguro, no? A message from special someone or a text from the bank. Siguro, nakarinig na kayo. Diba? Dumating na yung message no? from the bank sa inyo. Huwag lang yung credit card. Or a message from the Philippines na nangumusta sa'yo. That's not the kind of news that we want to hear. So, wag, man, wag muna natin isipin yan, yung mga bad news na naririnig natin. But let's focus on the good news of Christ. So, the gospel is the most important news that everyone on earth must hear. No? And listen. 
yung news lagi na naririnig natin pag uh, nagbubukas tayo ng ating uh, TV or no, di ba, nakikinig tayo sa, sa, sa news, laging bad news. Di ba? Wala masyadong good news na ngayon. No? As we hear what is going on around us, no? In the, lalo na dito sa part no? ng continent dito, we could hear no? some alarming news and We are worried. Uh, but we have the gospel. We have the good news. And to all who believe, hears it and believes in it, no, it's a good news. But A bad news kung sino man ang nag-reject nito. It will be a bad news for those who rejects the good news of the gospel. So for those who are interested on this good news, it will only be good news to you if you understand or if you understood the bad news. Diba? So what is the bad news? We are all, we are all, ang bad news dito. And it's a bad news for all. That we are all going to hell. That's the bad news. Because of sin, we are all going to hell. That's plain and simple. Because of our sins, we are destined to hell. Now, there is only two places where we are going after this life. It's either with the Lord you know, in heaven or in hell. Now, there is no in-between. And if you have really given this a thought, and take this matter seriously because this is a matter of eternity, you would ask yourself, when I die, where am I going? Where will my soul go after I die? This is a terrifying question, right? It's a terrifying question if you really take it seriously. If you really ask your question, uh, if you really ask this question to yourself, this is a terrifying question. And that we should know and be sure of our answer. Kasi dalawang choices lang. Like true or false. Dalawang You have only two choices. And there's only two answers. Yung eternity natin, no? yung eternity, yung buhay natin, yung eternal destiny natin, hindi ito pa chamba lang. Hindi ito pa swerte-swerte lang. There is a way to heaven. And there is also a way to hell. And we must choose. We must choose. Sabi ng Panginoon, enter through the narrow gates. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. Many enter through those broad and wide road. For gate, no, sabi niya, is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. So the gate to life is very narrow because there is only one way. There is 
only one way, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way. No, he is the only way. He is the truth and the life, and that's why the gate is narrow. Walang multiple choices dito. It's only Jesus. There is no other way to heaven except through Jesus. And that is the core of the gospel. Without Jesus, there is no gospel. That is why Paul said in verse 1 to 4, in, 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 uh, in, in Romans 1, now this is his greetings, he said, I, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an ap apostle, set apart for the gospel, for which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son. Concerning his son, who was descendant from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. For full, there is only one way. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. What Paul is saying here is that the gospel is not an invention. No, the gospel is not a new religion. It, is, it was promised by God to the prophets. In the scriptures that was fulfilled in Jesus. And that was the reason why the Apostle Paul worked hard. He worked hard to spread the gospel. He was willing to lay down his life for the sake of the gospel. He's willing to lay down his life for the lost in order that they would hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, no, just Paul, no, remember Paul, no, he too was a recipient of this good news. He too was a recipient of this good news. He was reminded of his own conversion. No? His encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ in the road of Damascus. He was, no, he was the number one persecutor of the church. But he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ and became the number one advocate, advocate of the gospel. He said in verse 1, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. We could see here, you know, Paul, you know, three I am statements. As we read this verse, you know, as the read was, as the verse or the, the passage was read to us a while ago. You know, his three I am statements about the gospel. First he said, I am, obliga I am under obligation, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise, or both to the wise and to the foolish. And verse 15, So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. And then verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He said, I am obligated. I am under obligation, both to the Greek and to the barbarian. Second, I am eager to preach the gospel. And third, I am not ashamed of the gospel. You see here, Paul felt the obligation. 
he felt the responsibility to share the gospel to others. His mission was, no, his mission in life was to finish the race, he said, no, and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given to him, to proclaim the good news of salvation to the entire known world. Yun yung kanyang mission. That was his mission in life, no, to proclaim the good news of salvation. So he felt that obligation. He was obligated first to Christ for being his Savior. He's no, under obligation or he is in debt, sabi niya, to Christ. Because why? Because of his former life. He was lost like others. And yet, he met Jesus and heard the gospel from his lips. And he understood the gospel. He said to Timothy, no, Christ no, came into the world to save sinners on whom I am the worst. Sabi niya. And in Ephesians 3, no, he said, though I am less than the least of all the saints, His grace was given me to preach to the Gentile the unsearchable riches of Christ. So His calling was to be an apostle to the Gentile. And Jesus made it very clear to him when He met him that you will suffer for my name's sake. That was not a great motivation, di ba? So, kung sa atin pa, di ba, niligtas tayo ng Diyos to suffer? Is that, will that motivate us? And yet, here Paul was willing to take up the challenge to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Despite of the suffering. And from the Jewish point of view here, there was only two kinds of people in the world. The Jews and the Gentiles. Paul mentioned it in verse 16. But here in verse 14, Paul was speaking to the Greek, or, or, or from a Greek point of view. He said, anyone, uh, sabi niya, no, he he was no he was ob, was obligated to undercome other obligation no, to the to the greek no, and to the barbarians diba? no, i am under obligation both to the greeks and to the barbarians So, yung, 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 yung ano dito is that in, the, in, in his point of view or, it, or from the Greek point of view anyone who doesn't speak Greek you know, sa kanila yan ay they consider it barbarian because they speak uh, yung kanilang pagsalita no, da, noon no, as they no, tulad natin ngayon di ba pag narinig natin ibang Ibang mga, uh, diba? ibang lahi ng sasalita, no? we mimic them. No? And iba, iba yung, we, we, somehow hindi natin talaga na, nakukuha yung kanilang sinasabi. And the same way, no, when, they, when the barbarian speaks, no, la, parang they could not, only they could hear is bar, 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 kaya natawag silang barbarian. No? So, so, no, so, they, no, yung, yung word na barbaros, di ba, barbaros. But also, because this Greek, those Greek people consider themselves no, cultured and they consider the barbarians as, as uncultured. Kaya sabi ni Paul, I am under obligation both to the Greek and to the barbarians. Kaya finalipay niya, both to the wise and to the foolish. Kasi they consider the barbarians 
as no, uneducated and foolish. So first, he was obligated to Christ for being his Savior. So second, he was obligated to preach the gospel of Christ to all types of people. Kaya sabi niya, to the Greeks and to the barbarians. I am under obligation for both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So this gospel, no, uh, this gospel that Paul is preaching and this gospel that we have is no, a gospel to all people. And it's, 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 the gospel is, not, no, is, is no respecter of men. Cultured or, uh, or, or, uh, or you know, educations or un educational attainment hindi nirerespeto o walang nirerespeto ang gospel. The gospel, sabi nga, is a great equalizer. Talo yung si, ano, si Denzel Washington, di ba, yung sa equalizer. The gospel is for every human being, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, sophisticated or unsophisticated. No, without the gospel, we are all equally lost. We are all going to hell without the good news of salvation. So Paul felt that obligation to preach the gospel cross-culturally. Not only to the Jews, but cross-culturally. No? Racially, socially. There is no boundary for the gospel. Everyone deserved to hear the gospel. That is why, you know, in this church, you know, we educate you about the mission, the importance of the mission. We have our Kairos, we have our Mobi 101. You know, this is important for the gospel of Christ to be preached to all the nations, to all ethnicity. And we must take part of it, church. We must be part of it. We too, as believers of Jesus, tayo din, we are in debt or indebted to Christ because He took the punishment for our sins. Diba? We are supposed to be paying the death for our sins. Because, no, but because God provided as a Savior, we are now indebted or indebted to God. Because just imagine out of billions of people in this planet, we have heard the gospel. We have heard the good news. We came to believe. Speaking of utang na loob, ito, yung, ito yung talaga yung tunay na utang na loob. We are in debt to God for His grace upon our life. We can never pay the debt of our sins. No amount of money or good deeds can pay for our sins. And in Romans 3.23, you know, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. We are under obligation to Christ because He paid our debt. He paid the price for our sin you know, through His death on the cross. We are indebted to Him because of His grace towards us. That is the reason we are under obligation to share the gospel to others. Although we cannot repay God for the salvation He gave us, we still can show our gratitude for His mercy upon us. 
for this gift of eternal life that he has given us by sharing, by proclaiming the gospel to others. We are under obligation. That is why Paul said in verse 15, So I am eager to preach the gospel. I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Paul had never visited Rome. Or, no. He go on not as a Christian, not as a missionary. But he was had never proclaimed the gospel in Rome before. And so he was eager to go there to minister to the, to the brethren. In verse 8 to 11, he said, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness in whom I serve with my spirit in the, spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing, I mention you always in my prayer, asking that somehow my God, by God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to strengthen you. So it means that there are believers in Rome. There are already believers in Rome. And so he was praying for them. And he was, he's, he's longing to visit them. He has been to many cities, you know, major cities, but never to Rome as a preacher. And he planned to visit you know, this Roman capital, you know, the Roman Empire capital, you know, several times. You know, we natin yan sa book of Acts. And he was always hindered to go there. In Acts 19.21, no, ito yung, ito yung kasagutan ng kanyang, ng kanyang prayer. It says there in Acts 19.21. And finally, no, ito yung, yung answer to prayer niya. Uh, the following night, sabi ng Panginoon, no, he, 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 he heard from the Lord. No, the, in, in Acts 23.11, the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for, I, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. That was the promise of the Lord to him. Eager siya na pumunta sa Rome. And this is the answer to his prayer. No? Para sa kanya, no, kung, kung, di ba, he knows what would happen to him in Rome. Though Rome no, represents danger to him. Though it represents opposition to his faith, it means persecution, even death. But it's also represent or represented to him an you know, a unlimited uh, opportunities. In Rome, no, he will have unlimited opportunities to share the gospel to this pagan nation or, or to, this, to this really, you know, uh, this, this uh, nation where they worship their emperor. No, nandun na uh, lahat ng klaseng mga kasalanan at Rome, in Rome. Pero the opportunity to proclaim the gospel outweighs whatever danger he might face. Hindi siya natatakot. He was even eager. No, hindi siya natatakot ano man mangyari sa kanya. No. He was not scared. He was eager to visit Rome. And finally, no, he arrived in Rome. In, this is recorded in Acts 20, uh, 28 verse 16. Not as a free man, but as a prisoner. He was brought there because he appealed to Caesar. But whatever, or whether he is in chain or whether he is a free man, Paul continued to proclaim the gospel. In Acts 28, 30, it says, this is now Paul in Rome. 
He lived there two, year, two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Though he was in house arrest, he was, he was never hindered. It never stopped him from sharing the gospel. And also in, in Philippians 1.13, this was his letter to the church of Philippi when he was in Rome. He said there, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So that he was, so that it has become known throughout the whole empire guard, uh, imperial, imperial guard, and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. See his testimony. So no matter what situation Paul was in, he was eager, he was ready to proclaim the gospel. Even when he, was, he, he, he met or he, he met was with tremendous opposition, still it never discouraged him. He was unstoppable. He was eager, always eager to proclaim the gospel until his last breath. We know in history that no, Paul was martyred in Rome. May pwede ba natin sabihin, sana all? Gusto ba natin maging like Paul in his eagerness to share the gospel? Gusto kong balikan yung ating mga letter to God. Yung mga nag-graduate sa Kairos. Naalala nyo pa ba yun? Nandun pa ba yung papel na yun? Maybe some of you, no? Nakalimutan na. Do you still intend to to follow through sa sinulat nyo? Paalala lang. sa ating mga lahat ng mga ginagawa natin para sa Panginoon. Let's do it in the spirit of eagerness. Whatever ministry you are involved in, let's do it in the spirit of eagerness. Kanina nga, di ba, umpisa pa lang si Alvin, Bro Alvin, si Bishop Alvin. Excited ba kayo? Excited ba kayo? Baka nawawala na yung excitement natin. Are we doing it under no, parang obligado tayo? Obligado na lang tayo na gagawin natin to Kaya ginagawa natin. Is it a routine na lang na every Sunday nandito tayo? Is it a routine na part tayo ng, ng magnification ministry? or other ministry. Routine na lang ba ito sa buhay natin? Sa daily, no, sa, sa weekly activities natin? Is that a routine? Hindi na ba tayo na-excited? Tulad ng iba, di ba? Dati, di ba? Ang aga-aga sa church. Wala pa nga ang iba. Wala pa nga yung mga magnification nandito na. Nakita ko yung iba, no? No, 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 talagang aga. Ngayon, si Alvin na lang yata, sabi na eh. Saan na lang naiwan? Joke lang. Agang-aga natin sa practice, agang-aga natin sa mga activities, sa Bible study. Maaga tayo because we are eager, we are excited. Nandun pa ba yun? Nandun pa ba? 
If we really understand what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us and what He offered to us, the gift of salvation, that is enough to, to, to motivate us to wake up every morning, to wake up early in Sunday, wala pang Sunday, excited to serve Him with eagerness and with joy. Third statement, sabi ni Paul, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Paul was undeniably unashamed of the gospel of Christ. We could see that through his experiences, what he went through in proclaiming the gospel of Christ, sa lahat ng kanyang mga missionary adventures, sa kanyang lahat ng mga kanyang mga 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 uh, pagpunta sa iba-ibang bansa or sa pagpunta sa iba-ibang lugar. No? We could see no, yung kanyang mga experiences, his imprisonment. No? He was imprisoned many times. He was chased out of, of the city. No? He was beaten. No? He was beaten. He was stoned. He was ridiculed. He was persecuted. No? Lap at. Diba? Accused as a lawbreaker, a, bl- a blasphemer. He, he endured all of this. He endured all the hardships, the humiliation for the sake of the gospel. He proclaimed. He was not ashamed of it. He was not ashamed of his scars for the gospel. Kaya kung tayo ay nagre-reklamo, ito lang, di ba? Sobra naman ang practice, sobra naman ang ginagawa natin to, Parang lalampas na tayo sa langit. Tumabi ka kay Paul at mahiya ka. Ilang latigo ang nat- 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 natikman niya. Diba? He was not ashamed of the gospel. Even though the gospel was mocked, ridiculed, rejected by those who do not believe, even then, Paul was never intimidated. Whoever his audience are, whether they are Jew, whether they are Greek, whether they are barbarians, pagans, Gentiles, educated or uneducated, people in high positions, wise or foolish, young or old, he was not ashamed to share the gospel to them. For he was called to proclaim the gospel. Because he knew and fully convinced in his heart that the gospel of God is for the salvation for everyone who believes. You just imagine kung ikaw yung bearer of good news, yung pinaka-importanting news sa mundo. Let's say you have the news in your hand about a cure ng cancer. Itatago mo ba? Isesekreto mo ba? Pipiliin mo lang ba yung taong isisharean mo? That's so selfish. We are the bearer of good news that can change people's lives to reconcile them to God. We have the greatest news that will affect the destiny of a person. We must share it. We must tell others. First of all, let's ask this question. Do you believe in the gospel? Do you truly believe in the gospel? 
See, the Paul, Apostle Paul was obligated, was eager, and was not ashamed of the gospel because, first of all, the gospel has transformed his life. Did the gospel transform your life? Have you experienced the transforming power of the gospel? Have you believed in the gospel? Okay, bang gospel yung no? Yung ibang gospel yung pinaniniwalaan natin. Have you been transformed by the gospel? Yun yung tanong. Kasi kung hindi ka na-transform, walang efekto. Itong gospel na ito. Has the gospel taken hold of your life? Is the gospel the driving force of your life? And some of you would ask, no, ano yung gospel? Kanina pa ako nagtatang naririnig ko yung gospel na yun. Ano ba yung gospel na yun sinasabi mo, pastor? I'm glad you asked kasi ito yung talaga yung mensahe para sa inyo. Yung mga naniwala na, na, di ba, na yung mga nag, who had believed the gospel. Although we have to preach the gospel to us every day, you know, preach the gospel to yourself every day. That will direct your life. But some people still do not understand the gospel. Ano ba yung gospel na yan? Church ba yan? Makain ba yan? Sabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 5:15 to 11. Sabi niya, now I would remind you brothers of the gospel I preached to you which you received in which you stand and by which you are being saved. Okay? The gospel is not only you know past, di ba? You are being saved. The gospel by which you are being saved. It's an ongoing process. If you hold fast to the world, I preach to you unless you believe in vain. For I believe, I, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scripture, and He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scripture, and that He appeared to save us, Then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. Most of them are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then on the, and to all the apostles. Last of all, as to the one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and this grace towards me was not in vain, On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they, we preached, so you believe. You see, the gospel is that Christ died for our sins. For your sins and for my sins. That's the gospel. That's the first Christ died for our sins. Do you believe that statement? Amen. Parang nag na tayo dito. No? So, do you believe that you are a sinner? And that's the reason why Jesus died for you and me. Because we are sinners. Why do people do not believe that Jesus Christ died for them? Because they don't think they are sinners. They don't believe they are sinners. But the Bible is very clear that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And it says, for the wages of sin is death. So if you are a sinner, and we know that we are all sinners, we still, 
We tell a lie. We commit adultery in our hearts. We are all sinners. We fall short of the glory of God. And we could not attain no yung perfection na required na God required from us. Bagsak tayo sa standard ng Panginoon. Ang kailangan ng Panginoon, 100%. Kung ikaw ay 99.999% lang, bagsak ka pa rin. Kulang. Kahit anong gawin mo, you will never achieve perfection. That's why you need the good news. The good news is, you don't need to be perfect. Christ died on your behalf. Christ died for your sins. He paid the penalty for your sins and my sins. The wages of sin is death. We are supposed to to be paying that death. You're supposed to be paying that sin. But Jesus paid it for us through His perfect sacrifice. The sinless Son of God took the punishment for our sins so that those who believe can have their sins removed. See, for many, that is very difficult to believe. How can a one man's death no, take or pay the penalty for the sins of the world? But he is not just a man. He is God. He is divine. He is God in the flesh. God became man so that he could bled and die to suffer the punishment of our sins. That's the gospel. But he did not remain dead. He was buried, meaning he actually died. Because if he did not die, there was no resurrection. There's no need for him to be raised. He was buried and was, no, and, and was raised on the third day in accordance to the scripture. Why is it so important? Why is it so important that it is according to the scripture? No, the scripture here refers to the Old Testament. The scriptures, no, the prophecies regarding this event. This was not a New Testament invention. Hindi ito gawa-gawa lang ng kanyang mga disciples or ni Apostle Paul. The prophecy concerning the Messiah has been foretold in the Scriptures thousands of years before Christ. Kaya, according to the Scriptures. This is how credible the Scripture is because all that was foretold about Jesus' birth his death, his resurrection, his ministry was foretold and was fulfilled. His birth, no, his, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, all of this was written in the Old Testament scriptures. That's why Paul was confident on what he preached because no, he was a scholar. He was the scholar of the Old Testament. No? He studied the scriptures and his eyes was open to the truth of the, of the scriptures. You see, no, Christ's death was not an accident. It was not an afterthought. It has been part of God's plan for all eternity. From the, from the book of Genesis, no, no, when Adam sinned, God has already a plan to redeem us. Jesus died, sabe, and buried and raised on the third day because if Jesus stayed buried, 
then what we believe, sabi ni Paul, is worthless. Tulad lang tayo sa mga religion sa, sa mundo that their founder they buried. We have a recent Savior whose name is Jesus. It cannot be denied that Jesus rose again because of the hundreds of people that have seen him, who can testify that he has risen. Kaya talagang sinulat ni Paul yan. No matter what the religious leader says, if the disciples stole the body of Jesus, or even today, you know, other religion would say that Jesus did not die and he did not resurrect, the scriptures confirm Jesus rose from the dead. Do you believe the gospel? Because if Jesus was not raised from the grave, Paul said, our faith is futile. It is worthless. And the scripture failed us. There is no reason to believe the scripture if it was not fulfilled. It was not true. He said in verse 12 to 14, sabi niya, now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you that there is how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. Verse 17, if Christ has been raised, or if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still. But we don't believe of Jesus who is in the grave. We believe on Jesus who is risen and is now seated in the right hand of God. The resurrection of Jesus is the central fact of Christian history because Jesus was raised from the dead. We know that the mighty, you know that the mighty power of God is working. He is destroying sin. He can change people's life. It can give a, 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 a new person, a, a, it can give a person a new life to live for. So the resurrection gives us hope that we believe that who believe in Jesus will also be raised from the dead to live forever with him. He gives us hope for the future. And that's the resur- resurrection power of Christ. So this gospel is only effectual to those who believe. It's only effectual for those who believe. Paul said the gospel is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believe. It is just just to know the fact about Jesus and the gospel. Believing is more than just knowing or acknowledging acknowledging it. Yes, no? Okay, yes, I know. Jesus died for my sin. I know that. No, but has it been, has, has it, has, no, it, it, naging personal ba ito sa'yo? Has the gospel be, became a personal matter to you? Have you put your trust in the gospel? Have you placed your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what the scripture says about Him? Yun yung tanong eh. Marami sa atin, we just believe. But have you placed your trust, your full trust and your full confidence in the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ? Kasi kung meron, kasi kung nandoon yung trust natin, iba na, iba yung ating pag attitude natin when it comes to worship. Do you believe He is your only Savior? Have you placed your faith in Him? Have you placed your full confidence in Him? See, faith without trust is not faith. 
No many people believe in Jesus, but that is not faith. Unless you put your trust in him or are committed to him. Committed ba tayo talaga sa Panginoon? Is the Lord driving our life? The young good example, Jan, is no, when we are sitting in the chair, diba? we trust that the chair could carry our weight. Diba? And that's the picture of trust. Yung mga nakatayo, di ba? They don't trust on the chair. So I think na lahat nakaupo, so you are trusting the chair. If you do not trust the chair, no, you won't sit on it. Tama? So putting our faith in Jesus for our salvation is like trusting on the chair. Putting all our weight, putting all our effort, putting all our energy, putting all our belief system in Jesus alone. We put all our trust in Him, not, not on ourselves, na kaya natin iligtas ang sarili natin, not sa ating mga gawa, ng mga mababuti, pagsisimba, sa pagtulong sa kapwa, pag-involve sa ministry, that doesn't count you don't put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to believe in the sacrifice, sacrificial death of, the, of Christ on the cross and his resurrection from the death in order to be saved. believe that he is alone he alone is the way the truth and the life for no one comes to the father except through him now you need to believe in the gospel verse 17 for it is for in it the righteousness of god is revealed from faith to faith faith for faith as it is written the righteous shall live by faith. You see, God requires God requirements for eternal life is righteousness. Not just our righteousness, but His righteousness. Without His righteousness, no one enters heaven. Do you have the righteousness of Christ? Do you have the righteousness of God in you? Where do we get that? Where do we have that righteousness? Where do we get that righteousness? We get that righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. You have to put your trust, your full confidence in Him, on His finished work on the cross. When we truly believe in Jesus and His death on the cross as the payment for our sins, no, his righteousness, that righteousness that of Jesus is given to us. It was imputed to us. It is credited to us, to those who believe in him. And God's eyes, in, in, God, in, in God's eyes, or in, in God's eyes, you are now perfect because you have the righteousness of Christ. You are covered by the righteousness of Christ. Because you believe him. And there are so much, so many things to say about this. Pero pag nag-iingay ng mga bata, ibig sabihin, palapos na tayo. So, if you have any questions, let's uh, mag, just feel free to talk to me. I will, I'm glad, I will be happy to spend time with you. Amen. Let's go bow our heads in prayer. As we prepare also for our communion, let's uh, bow our heads in prayer. And uh, come before the Lord.
first of all, thank him for his sacrifice. Thank him for what he did for us. Thank, thank him for his, the salvation that he has given to you. Thank him because you don't need to be perfect. You just need to believe in Jesus. You need to believe in the gospel. You need to believe that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. We need to believe that he is the only way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. It's also a time for confession. Sin separates us from God, from the blessings of God. If we, if we harbor sins in our heart, the psalmist says, God will not hear our prayers. And he also says in the gospel that, you know, if we want to offer to God what we have known that uh, we have offended someone, leave that offering. Leave that offering first and reconcile to your brothers. Reconcile to your brother, reconcile to your sister in order for your offering to be accepted. Father, we thank you. For the gift of salvation. Thank you, Father, for you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. And to die on the cross of Calvary, to be the propitiation for our sins and the sins of the entire world. Lord, that you said for those who believe in him, to those who accept him, those who believe in him, in him, you gave them the right to become children of God. Lord, we believe. We believe in your son. salvation for those who